Hey everyone, this is Tori Cushing with Thority Labs, and today I'm just going to walk you through how to use Screaming Fog in conjunction with Dixel. Super awesome, right? Okay, so if you haven't heard of Screaming Frog, it is a simply amazing tool. And the cool thing about it is that although you have to pay a license to save off your your export from or your your crawl from um, Screaming Frog, you don't need a license. You don't need to pay to just be able to export the data. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and kind of walk you guys through what it does. And just hit start. So just enter the URL to Spider, hit start. It's going to go ahead and crawl the website and find out a whole bunch of information, really, about the links, about the page titles, all the source codes, super, super awesome stuff. Okay, so now the crawl is finished. That took about, I don't know, maybe a minute. And now you can see all of this incredible information. So we're going to start with the internal tab. And the setup for Screaming Frog can be a little bit, a little intimidating at first. But what we're going to do is just go through this tab by tab and see what information we can really use. Here we are on the internal tab. And we can see all of our internal links, really. And the cool thing about this is that you can sort these. So I can sort it by the address, and I do this by just clicking on this tab. Or I could sort by status code. And you can see that this one has been moved permanently and it has a 301. All the rest of them are 200, which is that means that they're good and that they're functioning, you know, pages. Um, if we had a 404, that would be something that would kind of raise a concern and we would have to go ahead and correct that. But yeah, so if we scroll over here, we have all this incredible information. We have the, the title, we have the title links, we have the title pixel width, we have meta descriptions, links, H1s, H2s. So if we want to go ahead and look at, let's say, just one internal link and kind of drill down, we could go ahead and click on it, so let's say for the tour page and see all that information down here too. Okay, so here we have the URL information. So when we wanna look at just like one specific link, we can go ahead and just click on the link and then come down here to this bottom section. We can see even more information about it. So we have the URL information that just tells us everything about this page. So when we drill down to the specific link and we can see the in links, we can see what other pages on the website are linking to it and what the anchor text is for that. So we can see that this is pricing. We have a different one up in here that says sign up for our pro plan and links to pricing. We can also see the outlinks. So it's from this page to all these other pages and we can see the anchor text for that too. Okay, so now we're on the internal tab, but I'm gonna head over to the external tab. And we can see all of our external links and see how all those are doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort by status code. We can see that how well these these external links are doing. We see some 302s, we see some 301s, some 200s, and then one 404. So we have one page or one link that's an external link that isn't doing so hot. So I guess maybe this page has been taken down off of their blog or they changed something about their URL structure. Doesn't really matter. We just wanna go ahead and make sure that we change that and fix it. So we can do this by clicking on it, and we can look at the in link section. And here we can see where on authoritylabs.com, where we're linking to this page. So we can see that in the Authority Labs blog, content marketing 101 posts, linking to this business with the anchor text. And so I can actually go into Authority Labs and just go ahead and fix that and get rid of that, that link. And then we won't have any broken links. So simple as that, really, really super awesome to use. So then if I go to the next tab, we have all these response codes, we have URIs, page titles. The rest of this is kind of self-explanatory, but it's really important to have, you know, like meta descriptions and make sure that all your page titles are in a good length, um, H1s, H2s. And again, for all of these, you can drill down even more to see what's going on with that individual link.
Okay, so another thing to keep in mind is that on each of these tabs, you can go ahead and hit export and download these as a CSV. How cool is that? <laughs> so you can download all of these links and how well they're doing. I do this all the time for response codes, which is another thing I'm going to show you how to do in Excel. And all you have to do is just hit save and then it'll show up right on your computer. Okay, so let's move over to Excel and see how we can really kind of show how well we're doing internally on our website. Okay, so now we're over in Excel. And what I did here was I had each of the exports and they came out like this in the CSV files. And I put them all into one raw data tab in a different Excel spreadsheet. So that's where we're going to start off. Go ahead and do that just by copying and pasting them and putting them into one spreadsheet. The next thing I'm going to do is work on making this beautiful dashboard tab. And to do that, I'm just going to make a copy of this. Go ahead and create a copy. Switch the name over to dashboard. Oh, Excel won't let you double name something. So all I do is add in a space at the end. Ta-da! Beautiful. So I'm going to start by making this its own table. And I did this by just selecting a cell, holding down shift, and then holding down the control key while I hit the down arrow. Then I'm going to go up into the home tab and insert by table. Boop, boop. Okay, and actually one thing that I forgot to do even first was get rid of my grid lines. Now I have it in my quick, quick access toolbar, just my grid lines right here. You can do that by going up into file options, um, quick, or just right clicking and saying customize the ribbon, customize the quick access toolbar, and there you go. But for right now, we're just going to go up into the view tab and deselect grid lines. Yeah, better already. Just going to insert a few rows up here. Okay, and so I'm going to create tables out of these two. I just dragged and selected that, hit the control shift and the down arrow to select all of that, and then format it as a table. Just going to pick a different color. Super. Same thing over here. Whoop. Go crazy. All the way down. Format a stable. This too blue. So from here, I'm just going to move these titles up. And I'm going to bold them by hitting Control B. Get rid of some of these. And I'm going to increase the size just a tad. Okay. So now that I have all these in tables, I can filter them, which is great because that's filtering is amazing. And I can go ahead and just right click or actually just click on these drop downs and I can see all of my different results. So I can see here that I have a 404, at least one 404. I have a 302, 301. And let's say I want to identify, hey, maybe it's not so great that I have a 404 or a 301 or 302. So I can do this by just selecting the entire column, which I just do that by selecting this little arrow, going up into conditional formatting and creating a new rule. So I'm going to hit the second option and say if it's equal to, and I can either put equal sign 401, so that if it's equal to 401, go ahead and color it red. Scroll. Oh, oops. Let's go ahead and change that number to a 402, shall we? 404. Ta da! You're beautiful. Okay, you can go back up into conditional formatting, create a new rule. And let's say if it's equal to, and for here, since I have 301 right there, or 302, I can just go ahead and select it, hit OK, format it. So you can either enter in the value as the value, or you can go ahead and select the cell that has the value in it. Either one works. So let's go ahead and do that for the 200s and the 301s too. Let's do this for a cell that contains equal to 
say 200 formatic green go with light green hit ok I'm going to do the same thing for 301 Beautiful. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and make these not so bright. They're kind of um, too solid right now. I'm going to make them more of a muted color. But I'm going to do that on my own. I'm also going to get rid of the level and the inlinks just because it kind of clutters my dashboard. It's not something that I necessarily want to display right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for few of the other ones too. So you can either do this by selecting it and hiding it or just deleting it. Either one works. But I just want the viewers on my dashboard to be pretty focused on what's going on. And keep in mind that if you go ahead and delete it, it's totally fine because you have all your data in your raw data tab. Okay, so I went ahead and muted these colors a little bit and renamed these so that they were a little more intuitive. These are external response, response codes and these are the internal response codes. And then I have my meta descriptions over here. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is do some more conditional formatting on the links part. So, let's do that. So the links in my meta descriptions are really important. Obviously, you have your short links that are between the, you know, under 140 characters, and you have your mid-range links that are really more optimized that are like 140 characters to right around 155, and maybe maybe a little more than that, maybe like 160, and then you have the ones that are kind of intense and too long, and those are like 160 and above. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that in condition formatting. So we're going to start off with new rule, cells that contain, then we're going to go in between two values. So we're going to start off with, say, 0, or let's say 1, So it has if it has any characters in it, and go to say, 139. Let's go ahead and say, give it kind of a, a yellow warning, like, OK, this could be a little bit longer. Go ahead and optimize this a different way. And set a new rule. Let's say it's, if it's between 140 and 159. Let's go ahead and make that green. And go for a light green. When you can also go in and edit these more. So you can add white to them, you can add black to them, you can change them all around this entire color scale, which is really cool. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's do one more. New rule. Values that are between, what did we have before? 159, all the way up to 900 even. <laughs> We don't know how crazy they got with these characters. Go ahead and select red, and make it a little lighter, make it a little muted. Okay, so if I scroll down, I can see all the different changes. And if I don't have any meta description, I want to say that that's bad too. So we can go ahead and hit a new rule. Cells that contain, then we can just do equal to, zero. Format it with maybe a light orange. Like, hey, you should probably put in a meta description. Okay. So now we have all of our values. Beautiful. We can go ahead and filter these by color. So I wanted to see all of the ones that were too long. Okay, well, there we go. And we can go ahead and clear the filter. And we can sort by color filter by color so we can sort it, say we'll start sorting with green. And you just have all these different 
amazing filtering options. Um, when you get the chance, go ahead and go through those filtering options in tables. They're super cool. You can also do a custom sort, which is awesome. You can add another level. Say sort by length. We can do cell color. We can go ahead and have the yellow ones come next. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Okay, yeah. The options are endless. But yeah, that is how you export data from Screaming Frog and then import it into Excel and then make it pretty with some conditional formatting. Cool stuff. You could do this to all of your documents, but I like to do it to just kind of visualize the data and say, okay, here are the points where we need some work and here are the points where we can kind of know that we're doing a good job. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.